Hi, I'm Heinbach and it's good to be back. I knew very little about Italian zunz before making this video, but I've become completely addicted to them now. In the Marca region of Italy, tens of thousands of people worked on organs, accordions, but also synthesizers that were rather different from what the rest of the world was doing at the time. As many factories closed and companies disappeared in the mid-90s, the rich history of Italian synthesizers seemed to disappear forever. If it wasn't for the Museo del Synth Marchigiano, which aims to keep it alive. They invited me for a show at Acousmatic Festival in Ancona and to a residency at the Museo before. I knew I had to make this show special, so I decided to build it from the sounds of the incredibly beautiful weird and rare synth of Marke region. We call it the beast because it's really strong and um, really aggressive kind of a synthesizer. You have a four oscillator. You can choose two kind of waveform for uh, every oscillator and you can uh, decide partially harmonic, no? like a organ, you can decide 8, 4, 2 and you have this amount that now I will show you how it works because have this kind of system that they call SAOS is a polyphonic and incredible machine. Section, a poly, and a poly section, a spring reverb, and a filter, and it's four, four voices, and there are just two of these. And the Uranus One, which is a huge synthesizer with eight polyphonic uh, voices, it disappear. We have just the, the photo. This is the holy grail of the synthesizer.
classic two voice uh, two oscillator synthesizer with a DSR with filter with different filter low pass high pass and another strange filter which is a PM and then another oscillator which is the AM synthesis which is very strange and probably is something uh, that is made uh, connecting the two oscillator <laughs> everything inside and this is the technician the, our friend Marco Molendi and Mirko Trentin which is doing all the jobs of rebuilding the PCB I make the soldering during during the lockdown and find all the pieces and there is just five or six of, of the over on the round <laughs> interesting uh, work of the of the museum is keep all the all the, this person together the technician the old guy that that works for the factory the uh, engineer that uh, realized the the, the, the projects uh, and we have all together uh, sharing our our jobs and doing all the research for for these keepers and every day every time we find a new product that we never uh, heard before. One of the first arranger, they take the, the part of the drum machine or the organ and put in a single keyboard, still made of metal and with the design of the CRB which is very heavy and all the interactor is in metal and it works very well.
the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Very proud, beautiful. Now there, there is still another one crazy. Yeah? Which is the carousel. <laughs> it does sound like a carousel. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Most of them are um, created and developed for uh, help uh, Fisarmonica player. Are like a module like this. You have to connect this one to the accordion and let them dancing. This is the first Italian vocoder. You have the microphone and it's a very nice string machine. A string machine which is very common keyboard in Italy in this period and many of the frog groups of the period is using these strings but it is very nice because you can detune the oscillator There's an instrument input, so you can use all the drum machine and other uh, synthesizer to put in the in the vocoder.
Wildstone syntax that is one of the synthesizers that we prefer. In the, in the sense, uh, it's uh, one of the most modern uh, synthesizer with a modern approach that we have in all the collection. It is one that we always use for our performances uh, like Machine Nostra, this small collective uh, planning old only uh, synthesizer from our, our area. Um, we call him the Moog from uh, our area because it's really powerful. Three oscillator with another one plus that you can put all inside in one filter and you can uh, listen to this really powerful uh, uh, kind of uh, sound. There are this, this group of this monosynth made here. Uh, like the um, Sinter 2000 of FBT. <laughs> Listen to The people around is living and growing with organs and accordion and sometimes the son of the owner of the, the industry is trying to do something different and try to experiment with uh, synthesizer and drum drum machine just made in 10 pieces mm -hmm. 15 pieces two or three or four of, of them is still Running. The high industry here doesn't explore so much cheap gate connection, all this kind of stuff, because all this kind of synthesizer was produced uh, uh, thinking uh, to prog band, uh, this kind of stuff. We was uh, a little uh, uh, not in time. One of the few synthesizers that you can uh, connect uh, CV that is really important and it's uh, really... But just for the gaze, not right, too much. Not too much, just for the gaze. <laughs> we, we are from Mark, not too much. <laughs> not too much. <laughs> Quite um, a, a classic Italian keyboard in of the this period. We call the PSS piano string synthesizer. You have the section of the piano and uh, the strings, uh, the string machine, and uh, the synthesizer, which is usually a brass section. And th this is one of the rarest um, Farfisa keyboard. The name is Polychrome.
vocal chorus, which is the first keyboard with uh, uh, try a simulation of the vocal or the vo the human voice. the king of the synthesizer made here from from Mac region which is the the syntax the Elka syntax is well known as one of the biggest polyphonic of all the times So what would you say, what's, what's the golden period of this area? From the 
the, the 50 till uh, the, 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 uh, the, the 80s, after the 80s. The story is stopped in a, a bad way. 20 factory had closed. Harp was here. Moog was here. And Richard Wright choosing his organ was here. Everyone I forget uh, is forgetting the story because they are sad. They don't want to talk about this. Many people uh, losing the, the, the job. Many years, every, everything was uh, forgotten. What we are trying to do is find the, the story again. It's time to come back to the party. some synthesizers, some drum machines, uh, but that's, it's no so famous like Krumar or Farfisa, it's more like a, a, like a B-movie of the, <laughs> this kind of synthesizer. Another experiment from the Milton, uh, which is which usually produce organ, just one piece because we never s saw another one. So you have two parts of the keyboard, and every part of the keyboard you can assign the piano, the strings, the synthesizer, but you have another two sound of piano and this liturgic section, which is organ.
That was only a small part of the collection. But I had to start work on the live show and that means cutting up tape loops from the recordings I made of the synthesizers. If you are my Patreon, you get the tape loops I made from the recordings to use in your own music as you like, as well as the full audio of the show. Travels like these are made possible by my Patreons, so consider supporting what I do there. If you want to immediately book a ticket to Marchigiano to visit the museum, hold off. Right now it exists as a yearly meetup, not a public space to visit. As the story of the Sons of Italy becomes more known, that might change. There's more to come on this channel about the Synth of Marca region. The Bontempi goes experimental, Mars DSP platform from the Iris Laboratory, a completely bonkers instrument for experimental music. 
or the first 16-step programmable drum machine used famously by Manuel Göttsching and Jean-Michel Jarre, which I will cover next year. In the meantime, I leave you with something special from the collection of the museum. A synthesizer for the Sunday. For the what? Sunday. When you go to the church, you put... With the organ in a side and the voice in the other one. It's a loop cassette. Ah, so this would be in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Bells. Okay.